Hey guys, Kill Stokes here. Welcome back to the Trading Coach Podcast. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the carry trade technique. So whether you are a trader or an investor, if you're unfamiliar with this term or this technique or this strategy, it's certainly something worth paying attention to. I'll also explain kind of those weird fees sometimes that you get for holding trades overnight. Now, before we get into it, do me a favor. Podcast is growing at an amazing rate, but I'm greedy, so I wanted to grow some more. Here's what you can do to help support. One, share this on your socials. Let them know that you're listening to it. Let them know what you learn. If friends have questions, gear them towards the Trading Coach podcast. I can almost guarantee we have a podcast for almost every subject, especially after knocking this one off the list this week. You can also leave me a rating and a review if you haven't done so already. Lastly, please pardon any kind of like random yells, dealing with back spasm again today, which uh, is not very delightful, um, but wanted to get this topic out while it's fresh. Um, there goes one right there. Um, and also, I promised a trader on the platform that I would do one, and I am a man of my word. So the idea for this came uh, the other day in our live trading room. I try to start off each and every live trading room day with a little bit of a, a news blurb, right? Now, I am a technical trader, um, but I do understand the markets work both because of tech, uh, technicals and fundamentals. And I do think even as a technical trader, it's important that we keep an eye on the fundamentals for one of two reasons. Um, one, just to be aware and to know when to stay out the market. So this past week, we dealt with both a, a, C, a CPI blast and a PPI blast. The PPI came first, CPI came second. Lots of acronyms, but basically two major news events that the market uh, really went crazy afterwards. Um, but also you can use these fundamental news announcements to get home run trades, right? So a home run trade is a trade where you're shooting for a larger than normal expected profit. So for example, if I am long the dollar yen, and I always say you wanna start from a technical reason, if I am long the dollar yen, but from a fundamental perspective, I also have reason to believe that there is gonna be news that is coming out or there's an underlying kind of news situation, economic situation that we're in where the dollar should be considered a lot stronger than the yen, um, then you can use that information to shoot for bigger targets, kind of like a classic trend following uh, trade where you're just kind of trailing it up, 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 up. I don't believe in having forever targets. I do believe that you should get out at some point, but you're holding on to a position or a, a, a part of your position for a lot longer than you normally would. And recently in the news, aside from kind of all the economic stuff with the US and uh, us kind of shifting from our historical rate cut cycle to saying that, ah, we might do it in September or we might not. Um, we've been keeping an eye on the yen. Now, the yen is one of my favorite pairs to do home run trades on because for better or for worse, they are pretty blatant about what they are doing. Uh, the Bank of Japan will come out and say, yeah, we want to devalue our currency. So have at it. Yeah, we're going to keep negative interest rates. So have at it. Yeah, we're going to intervene at some point <clears throat> two weeks ago. Um, so have at it. So if you're someone that follows the news and you're able to interpret it, you can kind of get these blatant clues and, and, and shoot for more of those home run trades, knowing that you have the banking of their their bank. Now, this is different than like the the Swiss stuff that came out years ago or probably a decade ago now where they're like, we're holding it at 120 and we're going to protect it. And then people got cute and they pulled the rug out a little bit different than that. This is a, I get that's a, a, not a black swan event. I guess it is a black swan event, but that's a much more rare occurrence than the Bank of Japan just putting it out there saying, hey, we don't mind keeping these uh, these rates low. But What's interesting enough is that there's recently been a switch as the US dollar, the dollar yen, I should say, approaches this magic number of 150. That's always kind of the, the psychological number that people start worrying about. Uh, the Bank of Japan is actually not happy with the pricing of their yen versus the dollar, right? They're not happy with the weakness. And for the first time, and I think, man, I don't know how many years ago, I want to say like 17 years, um, 15, 17 years, the Bank of Japan has come out of negative interest rates, meaning that their interest rates were negative. I think it was like point, negative point one, And they have brought themselves out of that. And, and, and along with the intervention, they're kind of, you know, I guess trying to do a, a flex, a show of power that, hey, like, we're going to protect this yen. We are going to strengthen it. 
in hopes that it scares traders away. Now, my personal opinion on the whole thing is that this hasn't been a concern of mine because we know how strong the dollar has been right now. So until we get into our rate cutting cycle, I think that's what's going to be the bigger kind of determining factor of the dollar yen strength versus anything Japan does. Um, but I've also been in the game a long time, so I've seen a lot of this kind of um, funny mental talk trying to scare the herd into doing one thing. But back to the topic of the podcast, we started discussing different techniques for using fundamental analysis and how I use them. And one technique that I brought up was called, I don't, I don't use this personally, um, purposely personally, but an invest, uh, investment technique that you could use, investment long-term trading technique that you could use is called the carry trade. And a lot of people are like, what? what does that mean? And to dumb it down, because that's how I get down, right? Nice and dumb, the Akil Stokes way. Um, Basically, a carry trade is this. You are borrowing money at a lower interest rate and putting it into something that gives you a higher interest rate. Now, remember with Forex and currency pairs, what's different than the stock market is that when you're, when, when you're buying or selling a Forex pair, it is a pair. So you're dealing with two currencies. So the dollar yen, if I am buying the dollar yen, I am buying the dollar, I'm selling the yen. If I am selling the dollar yen, then I am buying the yen and selling the dollar. So it's always this kind of individual kind of battle between two different currencies. So when you have two different currencies that have very large gaps in their interest rates, it works just by buying it, in this case, the dollar yen, just by buying it and holding it, you're putting yourself in a position where you are purchasing something with a lower interest rate and holding it in a higher interest rate. So imagine it being like this. If we had um, if we had two banks right next to each other and one bank let you have a loan at like 0.1%, right? That was your interest rate on a loan, 0.1%. And then bank A gave you a loan at 0.1%. And then bank B had a savings account that gave you 0.2%. If you simply borrowed money from bank A, took it right across the street, I guess now you can wire stuff, but back in the day, we used to take it across the street and write a check, check and put your John Hancock on it. Um, <laughs> any moment to feel old, right? Um, but essentially, if you, if you borrow from bank A at 1%, and you put it right into a savings account in bank B that gives you 2%, in essence, you are making 1%, right? Because you are borrowing as much money as you can at a lower interest rate, and you're putting that same amount of money into um, the bank with a higher interest rate, which means you're making more off of it by doing nothing, right? And simply what you would do is you would just try to borrow as much money as you can and just put it in that bank. That is essentially what a carry trade is. You are taking a currency, you're looking for, again, the, the difference between a currency that has a very high interest rate, like the US dollar, we're at what, 5.5 right now, if I remember, I don't keep up to date with these things, I think we're at 5.5, and then you're going to the yen, which is basically zero. So the yen zero, you're going from zero to 5.5. You can see that if you simply just hold this trade, you will continue to make interest, 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 interest on a daily basis and eventually an annualized basis, right? So that is the technique of a carry trade. Now, seems simple, right? Now, and then before you guys just go out there and do it, two things. One, remember that this interest, this interest is coming very, very, very small. So like theoretically, like if, if you were to make like 4% annually on this carry trade, that's only what, about like 0.01, some type of percentage like that daily, right? So you're you're not making that much short term. So that's why I say this is not really a trading technique. It's more of an investment technique where you're planning on holding this for a very, very, very long time. So if you have two currencies, two economies that you know are in completely separate directions, one is cutting rates, one is hiking rates. And you know, in, in, in general, before COVID, right, these things didn't change too often, right? This is one of the first times we're going from an aggressive hike to what was potentially supposed to be an aggressive sell. Then you can plan this out where it's like, hey, I, I can probably stay in this cycle for four years, right? However, if you try to get cute 
and all of a sudden you're you got this carry trade and because remember the, the currency is actually moving as well so you have an active you're, you're making this interest but you also have an active PL on your chart but if you try to get cute and let's say you, you do it short term then all of a sudden right the dollar is like okay here we go aggressive aggressive um rate cutting cycle coming up six times in 2025 and then bank of japan's like okay here we go we're gonna start hiking rates we like the way it felt before let's do it again all of a sudden you can find yourself in an equal position or an opposite position where you've basically made zero profit or even could have a, a net negative depending on the direction of your trade and depending on whatever cost and fees are associated with it so it's not something you get cued off of it's more of a longer term investment play so I hope that makes sense. Sometimes my words get a little bit mixed up, especially when I'm in here flinching every five minutes with back spasms, but that should explain what a carry trade is, how you can benefit off of it as a long-term trader or more so an investor. If you have any questions, let me know. Just put it in the Spotify Q&A thing below or leave me a comment on YouTube. Thanks as always for joining again, Trading Coach Podcast. These are episodes for you by you, meaning when you guys have questions, I'm gonna give you answers. So if you have any other topics that you want me to discuss, maybe uh, things that you haven't heard before or maybe clear up something that you're hearing out there on the internet, just let me know. I love fresh topics. I love doing fresh podcasts. Podcast, and I love giving you guys what you want to hear. Rate review before you leave. And until next time, plan your trade, trade your plan. Take care.